السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ الحمد للہ الذي فضل سیدنا و مولانا محمد صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم علی العالمین جمیع و اقامہ یوم القیامت للمذنبین المتلوثین الخطائین الحالکین شفیعا فصل اللہ تعالی وسلم و بارک علیہ وعلى كل من هو محبوب ومرضي لديه صلاة تبقى وتدوم بدوام الملك الحي القيوم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله بالهدى ودين الحق أرسله أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما سلككم في سقر قالوا لم نكن من المصلين ولم نكن نطعم المسكين وكنا نخوض مع الخائضين وكنا نكذب بيوم الدين حتى أتانا اليقين صدق الله العظيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد معدا الجود والكرم وآله الكرام وابنه الكريم وبارك وسلم عليك الصلاة والسلام Respected brothers and sisters Alhamdulillah We are here to perform our Jumu'ah prayer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it. Ameen. But before I start my lecture, I understand it is mandatory that we start with the thanking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He is our Lord, sustainer, provider, protector. We send peace, salutations, blessings upon his most beloved Nabi, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. We send blessings upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's entire household, his all the companions. And we send blessings upon every single one who have died in the state of Iman. We make dua, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our efforts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all kind of calamities, disease, viruses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us maghfirah, jannah in here after. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. We have started a topic, I believe one and a half months ago, major sins. And so far we have discussed five major sins. Today inshallah, I'm going to talk about one of the most most important, most important one. And you all know every single time whenever I start my topic, I always, I always talk how many uh, percentage of the community is involved in this sin. But this is so sad to say that the sin I am talking about today, majority of this ummah is involved in this. And that is not praying on time. Missing salah, skipping our salah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, we must stay away from seven major sins. Seven major sins. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on number six, or in some narration number five, number five Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned, wa tarkus salati. Tarkus salah, skipping our salah. Not offering our daily prayers on time. Missing our salah. And this is something as major sin and that can lead us towards Jahannam. In Surah Muddathir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ On the day of judgment, Jannati people, will, they will ask to Jahannami people, what happened? Why you are in Jahannam? مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ What happened Why you are in Jahannam? They will say, لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ we were not praying on time. We were not 
amongst those who pray on time, we used to skip our salah. And this is very important for every single one, for all age group, I would say. Youngsters, kids, and you know, uh, our youth, those who are working, and you know, husbands, wife, old people, every single one of us, everybody. Salah is mandatory, is obligatory upon every single one of us. Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minina kitab mawquta. Indeed, salah is made obligatory upon you, upon every believer, upon every believer on a particular time, specific time. When in the morning, before sunrise, is fajr, is first upon every single one of us, all of us. When it's zuhr time, it's first upon all of us. When it's asr time, it's first upon all of us in every single country. It's not... Why I'm saying in detail, nobody should think that, okay, I have the exception. No, nobody. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most forgiving. If we have something, uh, you know, very important excuse that you think that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept, he is ghafur rahim. But when we make it a habit, and how we know that this is a habit, if we look at the Jumu'ah prayer, and if we look Towards other salah, we understand the majority of the community, they don't pray. In Jumu'ah, we have to offer two salah. On Eid, we have to offer three salah. And everywhere this is complete for. This hall, you know, the back or in the school, upstairs, attic, outside, outside. And uh, uh, this last Eid, it was even on the ramp walk, everywhere. But now, if you come in Asr Salah today, what will happen? Imam will be waiting for the people. So we can start our Salah on time. If you come Maghrib Salah, you will know. With that, we understand the percentage of the community which are, which are praying. And you must be thinking, okay, what if we do not come here? Then we might have, we, we must be praying somewhere else. But actually, this is the situation everywhere else. In all the masajid, you can compare their Jumu'ahs and regular Salah, you will see the difference. You will see the difference. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us good and pious believer. May Allah give us tawfiq that we do pray on time. But if we do not, now let's focus on the ahadith what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said. First narration coming from Mustad Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, hadith number 50,185. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the difference between believer and disbeliever is only one thing. Offering salah. Those who offer their salah, they are believers. And those who do not offer their salah, they are actually doing an action which is similar to disbeliever. This is the difference. Al-farqu bayn al-islami wal-kufr. Only one thing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not say about this beard. Because this is, this is something, you know, uh, can be seen on the face, you know. It is highlight on our face. Everybody can know this, he's uh, keeping a beard. But Rasulullah did not say about this. It's not about our clothing. Somebody wears jubba, it means he's a Muslim. Rasulullah did not say that. What did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? Al-farqu bayn al-Muslim wal-kafir, bayn al-Iman wal-kufr is as Offering daily prayers, that's it. This is the main difference between believers and disbelievers. We have to ponder upon ourselves and we have to think, what are we doing? Are we doing an action which is according to Prophet Muhammad wasallam can lead us towards infidelity, towards disbelief? We have to think about this. With the same word, a little bit of difference of the word, I have five or six ahadith in front of me. Hadith from Bukhari, from Muslim, Nisai, and I'm seeing Al-Mu'ajamul Awsat, Musnad Abu Ya'la, and all of them have similar meaning. Difference, some hadith says different, uh, difference between believer and disbeliever. Some hadith says difference between Iman and Kufr. Some says difference between Iman and Shirk. I believe all of them have the same meaning. as Offering daily prayers on time. This is very important. Another hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. Narration of Rasulullah 
He said, if somebody, if somebody who makes sure that uh, he do these three things, or you could say in other words, if somebody who is lazy and acting upon these three things, then no matter whatever good deed he does, whatever good deed he does, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to accept. What are those things? First one, the one who does not have iman, tawheed, oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who does not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no matter, even if, even if he prays on time, even if he have, uh, even he must be fasting, even if he do anything, any action will not be accepted because he does not have iman. He does not believe in oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second thing, farz namaz. Daily obligation, this first salah. If somebody misses this, and look at the word of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, even if he slaughter himself for the sake of Allah, and if even if he give every single thing, whatever he has in the charity, in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he does not offer his daily prayer, if he does not have tawheed, then forget about this. Nothing will be accepted. Nothing will be accepted. It means this is not only a major sin. This is something has a lot with our iman to. This is something which is uh, very important regarding uh, you know, uh, strongness uh, of our iman to. If it is strong or weaker iman, it all depends on salah. Another narration which is a little bit uh, bigger, lengthier, inshallah, I'm going to mention. Narration of Sayyidina Ubadah ibn Samit radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He says, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has commanded me and he said, I'm going to teach you seven things. You do act upon these seven things. It is very, very important. Inshallah, you will get Jannah. Or Awkama Qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He commanded me to do these seven things. First one, never ever commit shirk no matter what. Even if somebody wants to kill you, or if somebody wants to uh, uh, make your body into pieces, still do not commit shirk. Do not commit shirk. First thing. Second thing. He says, never ever leave your salah, skip your salah, no matter how hardship you are going through. No matter what your excuses are. Never ever miss your salah. And this is so sad that in today's world, we do have very small excuses to skip our salah. And how I tell people, when youngsters, when people, they do talk to me, Qari sahab, we have job, we have this and that. And you know, it's sometimes it gets really difficult to do. I always ask them, I always tell them that you switch your priorities or you switch your excuses. Whatever excuse you think will not be accepted for your job, you make those excuses for salah. Inshallah, you will offer your prayer on time. When you have to go for work, and if your wife, your children, they say, that do not go for work today, what do you say? Sorry, I cannot leave. Okay, my actually uh, leaves are already done. I have to go no matter what. If you have a minor headache, what you will do? I have to go. If you have something going on, I have to go. If Even if you are there is you know, wedding or something in your family, you say, okay, I have to go, I'll be back soon. It means you do not skip your work. Well, what about salah? We have all these excuses for salah. Every single thing. Every single thing. Minor headache, salah is gone. Short travel, salah is gone. You know, grocery shopping, salah is gone. Something else, salah is gone. And these are excuses. Some people, they do not even worry about excuses. They are sitting at home in front of TV, watching Netflix or YouTube, and they do not worry if it is Zohar time, it's Asr time, it's Maghrib time, it's time. They do not worry at all. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ma'un, فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ Wail. Wail is one of the greatest Huge adab in Jahannam. He said, it's well for those who are offering their prayers. It's not for not offering. It's for those al-musalleen, those who are offering their prayers, daily prayers, but al-ladheena hum an salatihim sahoon, they do 
but they do out of laziness. They don't do it on time. Or it's, I still have a few minutes. I still have, you know, 10 minutes. I still have five minutes. And then at the last moment, what they do? They go, you know, short wudu and fast and quick. Two rakat, five rakat, uh, four rakat and three rakat salah. And they think it's done. I'm seeing a lot of youngsters and many parents they complain. They say, Karisa, whenever I, uh, we ask our children, did you pray? One minute before they say no and after one minute they go into their room and they come out and in one minute and they say yes, we did. Am I wrong? I'm seeing a lot of parents and they can tell me that this is uh, you know, right. In one or two minutes they come, yeah, I prayed. And when parents say, how did you pray in one minute? Then the children, they say, you don't trust us? You don't believe me? But this is not logically truth, right? This is not, uh, it, that cannot happen. Even if you have done it, let's say, even if you have prayed it, let's say in one minute or two minutes, what do you think? Is it acceptable? It's not. فَوَيْلُ لِلْمُسَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَهُونَ Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was sitting with his sahaba, a person. He was praying in the Masjid al Nabawi, and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam called him and said, "You must pray again." He said, "I just prayed." Rasulullah said, "That's not counted. You were so fast in your salah. You must have, you know, arkan, ta'adil arkan, slowly, easy, steady." When you do say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, it must be very nice and fluent with, you know, complete submission towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you go into the ruku, you must feel it when you say, Subhana Rabbi al when you, when you are in sujood, you must say properly, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. When you read at tahiyyatu lillahi wa salabadu, you must have those feelings. But when we say so quick and fast, so quick and fast, it means we are not into salah. We are just fulfilling a duty just because our dad will, you know, he will get mad, he will be angry. But we are doing it uh, for the sake of, you know, those things. I would request every single one, all the age group number, do not miss your salah. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. Another narration, it's beautiful. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, uh, never ever commit shirk and never ever disobey your parents, no matter whatever, no matter whatever they do. And this is important. Many people, they always justify things. And they say, my dad, he doesn't listen to me. My mom, she does not pay attention. <laughs> Look at the word of Rasulullah He says, you cannot disobey your parents, even if they kick you out from their house. Another narration, a sahabi came, Ya Rasulullah, what should I do with my parents? Rasulullah said, always keep respecting them. He asked, Wa in zalama, what if they do zulm upon me? Rasulullah said, still, you have to. This is unconditional respect and love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us for our parents. This is so sad that in today's world, I, we see that people want to give respect to the parents when they think they deserve it. They deserve it. They always deserve it. By the day they gave birth, they deserve it. No matter what they do, they deserve it. But this is not the topic. Topic is salah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, third thing, never ever miss your salah. Never ever miss your salah. If you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah, blessing will go away from you. Never ever consume alcohol. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, this is the root of all shortcoming major and minor sins. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, never ever consider any halal thing as halal or any haram thing as halal. Whatever Allah has made halal, those halal, halal for us. Whatever Allah has made haram for us, those things are haram for us. Never switch. Last Friday, I had an argument with a brother with this topic. Uh, switching halal and haram. And it was not, you know, an ordinary, it's a huge, you know, argument. And the topic was, why pork is halal? Why pork is halal? And his logic was, that when you drink alcohol, you actually get mad. You, you, it, you, you can see in your, you know, body. But when you eat pork, nothing happens. 
I said, really? This is the logic. Besides alcohol, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a lot of things harams. But nothing happens in our body. And many of them are actually, we feel good. If somebody commits a zina, at that point, at that point, you actually enjoy it. What does that mean? It should be halal? It should be halal? It's haram. For believers, there's only one thing, no matter what, that Allah has commanded us. إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةَ وَالدَّمَا وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ And this ayah was not revealed once. I, I believe six or seven times. وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ How come we believers need a logic behind that? And that's why several times when people ask me logic, I always say, if it is for you, I would say there's no logic. Commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know why? When you give logic, let's say you say pork has a lot of, you know, germs in it. But that does not work. Because let's say goat does not have any germs in it. But if it is not slaughtered properly, will it be halal for us? No. Let's say if it was not earned with the halal money, will it be halal for us? So it has nothing to do with germs and, and any other thing. Only one thing. If Allah has commanded us this is halal, it is halal. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us this is haram, it is haram. That's it. For believers, for us, there's no any logic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us strong iman, inshallah, Rahman, ameen. There's worldly things, worldly affair, you know, earning more and more. I don't know why. Many of us, we always find to way, you know, uh, way out. I finished that argument with this word, and this is what I'm going to say to you. So let's say, if you have those things in your mind. The argument was little, you know, heat up. I said, okay, I'm ending up with one word. He says, Karisam, I can make you quiet in this because I have a lot of, you know, proof and this is and that. I said, okay, you do not have to make me quiet. I will be quiet right now. I am. But I want to see, will you make, uh, will you make, will you be able to convince Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this thing? Let's assume you are on the day of judgment in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah will tell you that I made pork haram. What will you say? Is there any way that you can make Allah quiet? Can you? Can any of us? Whenever these thoughts come in our mind, whenever, whenever, then let's have an argument. And whenever you think, okay, when I did argue, some brother, they did convince, they actually got quiet. Never think that you are winning. No. Always think, in Allah harrama. Indeed, Allah has made haram. That's haram for me. And whatever Allah has made haram, halal, that is halal for me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand this. And uh, one last thing. Uh, in this hadith which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned, when you are in the battlefield, never ever run no matter what happens to you. And when you have, if you have a family, if you have a family, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, you spend upon them and you give them tadib. You give them tadib, adab. You teach them how to behave. You teach them manners, akhlaq, kirdar, salah, obligatory lessons. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, uh, you must be hard sometime and you must be soft sometime. It should be, it's, uh, we should not always be easy. And it should not be according to their, you know, wish the way they want. Sometimes we have to be strict and sometimes we have to be polite. That's how these things work. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us good Muslim, inshaAllah. Rahman. Another, just to encourage people, another beautiful hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that uh, the one who skips his salah, the one who skips his salah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreases his children and his wealth. Decrease the children means baraka. Baraka goes away. And baraka even in wealth, in mal. And this is, this is why we actually skip our salah most of the time. Our main excuse is, I was at work. Our main excuse is, sorry, I was busy in my work. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, when you do skip salah, baraka goes away. So to get baraka, 
we have to offer our daily prayer. I'm not saying, I'm absolutely not saying that you should skip your job uh, because of, you know, uh, uh, salah. No, you should convince them. You should convince, you know, people. And I have a lot of example, a lot of example. When you do good, when you have character, when you have akhlaq, Alhamdulillah, people do listen. Allah is the one who helps. When you have pure intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who helps. Uh, one last hadith, uh, last two hadiths, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, this is very important. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the one who skip his salah, he does not have any share in Islam. Any share, any portion of Islam. And the one does not have wudu, he does not have any portion of salah. And I think if we understand the last part, without wudu, our salah can be accepted. What about one person? Can be, it, it can be accepted? No. Even our Allahu Akbar, the first one, that cannot be accepted. What does that mean? If we understood this, now let's come to the first part. If you do not have salah, you have no any portion in Islam. It means are all other actions, they are totally dependent on this. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the first thing we will be asked on the day of judgment is, is salah. First thing. This is going to be first question, how was our salah? And I always give this example. If you are, you know, speeding, and if you are doing, you know, uh, tailgating or anything while driving, you know, reckless driving, and a cop actually pulled you over, and he asked you first question, license and registration. If you are passed in, this, th in these two things, you give them, you still have chance that he will not give you ticket, right? Because he may forgive you. Okay, today I'm just giving you warning, you may leave. And what you fail in first question, license and registration, what will happen? Now you will get the ticket for license and registration, not carrying them and speeding or whatever thing you are doing. So the first question is very important. On the day of judgment, if we pass in this, this first question, inshallah, 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 we will pass other things too. But if we miss our salah, if we miss these things, what will happen? Then everything will be asked accordingly. Every single thing. Now let's talk about zakat also. Now let's talk about this also. Minor sins also. Everything will come. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us good Muslim and give us tawfiq. Give us tawfiq that we must offer our daily prayers on time, inshallah. We, I will continue this topic one more week, inshallah. And in that I will talk the two things. It means intentionally. People, those who skip their salah intentionally. And many people, they do skip their salah unintentionally. Forgetfully, it happens. So what we have to do? And second thing, uh, at certain age, when salah becomes first, what we have to do? Inshallah, Rahman. So I will continue this topic uh, next week also. But before that, I would request all of, uh, you know, youngsters, youth, do not miss your salah no matter what. So Habib Kiram, look at their life. Look at the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His life. He never ever skipped any salah. And he always asked people to do, do that. Istainu bi sabri wa salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you are going through hardship, what is the best way to go to? As salah, as sabr and salah. Have patience and come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the best way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us a good believer, inshallah. And may Allah give us tawfiq that we never ever skip our salah, inshallah. Tazakallah khair. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all.